Hello, this is Sterling, Starling. Um, I, um, we're one day before releasing him. I found him as a baby, not a fledgling. Uh, during a windstorm, he appeared in the parking lot of my work. And I'll give some more backstory later, but uh, I didn't plan on taking any video or anything because I, frankly, I wasn't sure if there would be any helpful information or, you know, maybe we'd have a negative outcome. Uh, I read some somewhat sobering information on the web, a lot of contradicting information, and since it appears we might have been successful releasing uh, his release date is tomorrow. I thought, okay, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and record this. I'm going to get this information out there for people like me who are not wildlife experts and um, may not know which way to go with the information they find on the web. Um, so uh, he, um, I'll uh, post links to the recipe I used to feed him as a baby. Um, but I had, after researching, come up with a list of milestones that I needed to see before I felt comfortable releasing him. And this is the last one, which is looking for food and being able to quickly eat it on his own. Um, so one week ago, um, I came and I tried to feed him a bug from my finger. Um, with the condition that he had to grab it and eat it. I was not going to put it in his mouth when he bit. Um, eventually, he realized the begging didn't work, and he tried several times to grab uh, the wax worms from my fingers. Um, out of approximately 20, he could only grab and hold on to uh, one or two coordinated enough to eat it. Um, so I knew he wasn't ready, and so we let him grow up for another week. Uh, my mom built him this cage. You can see. Um, so that he can, with the bottom, just lifts out of this so that he can go inside at night and be safe. But during the day we move him out um, so he could uh, be accustomed to the noises and sights and such in the wild. Um, so I decided to try again yesterday for self-feeding and what I did was I had my uh, parents uh, re uh, withhold food for at least four hours so he was very hungry when I came. I have this Tupperware and I put some artificial grass you can buy in any pet store. I just happened to have some and I, um, I wanted some barriers so he'd have to look for food and I added probably 50 to 100 baby tropical roaches, which I breed for my animals. And uh, it, he didn't go down here right away. Um, I had to kind of lure him down here with the straw that he eats from. And as soon as he saw a bug, he immediately went for it. And I was very impressed. I wanted to see, and I got to see, that he could very quickly and accurately pick a bug and eat it. I knew last week that nature wouldn't give him 20 attempts to eat one worm. Uh, so this is very important for me to see that he can eat. And eat apparently a lot. I don't know how many they eat. So this is the day before release and this is how uh, we got him to um, eat. Today, uh, I did not bring more roaches. I don't want to deplete my colony. Um, we caught um, a variety of different bugs. Uh, beetles, some worms. Oh, a lot of, uh, I don't know, what do you call them? Roly polies, pill bugs, sow bugs. So I know they're different. I don't know their name. Uh, we put those in there. Basically anything we could find. Um, I've seen him eat ants. As they wander by, he's tried to get a fly. The fly was too fast. What's on your beak, Sterling? 
Oh, poo, wipe it off. You need help getting that off? Yeah. You still look pretty. So I had started with the wax worms because those are easy to hold in his beak and they were very slow um, having come out of the refrigerator. Um, but I did not continue with them because I don't want him to feel like or get the idea that all uh, bugs are white, slow moving and easy to find. Uh, so we mostly are putting brown and black bugs in here to make him look for them. The roaches did bury themselves which was a good thing because he learned how to apply that uh, peck open behavior I saw. Whereas before he was just kind of randomly doing it in the air or at the the wire on the cage. And I also, another thing I did is I put um, probably an excess of bugs in there because I wanted it to be easy for him so that he would automatically prefer um, to find the bugs himself. And I don't know if, if he would have gotten frustrated and preferred to beg until we gave in. I, I don't know, but uh, this, is, this is just how I did it. I'm not an expert at all. I had to spend hours on the internet um, figuring out how to raise him. Um, there was another guy who posted uh, about his bird and he helped me a lot. Um, so I'm going to include a link to his videos. Um, I didn't see the bird eating on its own, but I did scan through some of them, so I could have missed that. And I, that kind of prompted me to come up with the idea of posting this. So maybe people can try it, and maybe it'll work for you and your bird. Uh, I'd say don't give up. Uh, like I said, one week ago, he was not coordinated enough to hold or eat a bug even with, with assistance, but one week later, you can see he's easily doing it. Um, probably include the other milestones that I wanted to see. Oh, one important thing I wanted to say was, I came across a lot of information that basically said, there's no hope if you raise a bird alone, a, a single bird, there's no hope for that bird when you release. And also, if you allow